So this is the topic, fractional and negative indices, and it's a really common topic on the non-calculator paper, just because if you've got a calculator, you're more likely to be able to just type this in and do it. So we're gonna start with question 1a, which is to find the value of four to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero equals one. So nice one to start off with. We're just gonna put one as our answer, four to the power of zero, x to the power of zero, anything like that is gonna be equal to one. For question 1b, we're asked to do 8 to the power of minus 2. Now, when the power is negative, that's going to make your base number its reciprocal. The reciprocal of 8 is 1 over 8. The reciprocal of 3, for example, is 1 over 3. The reciprocal of 4 is 1 over 4. The reciprocal of 2 over 5 is 5 over 2, and so on. So the reciprocal is the inverse. The reciprocal of 8 is 1 over 8. So this question is essentially saying 1 over 8 to the power of 2. We've used up that negative power by making 8 its reciprocal, and we still need to square it. So that's going to be 1 over 64. 1 squared for the numerator, 1 times 1 is 1, and 8 squared for the denominator, so that is 1 over 64. Question number 2a, find the value of 3 to the power of minus 2. So again, we've got a really similar question than we've just seen to that that we've just seen here. The negative power tells us to do the reciprocal. So we're going to say that this is equal to 1 over 3, but we still need to do that power of 2. We still need to square it. So the negative, we're using that up by doing the reciprocal, and then we still need to square. 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, so this would be 1 over 9. Question part B, find the value of 100 to the power of a half. So the power of a half, x to the power of a half, whatever it is, is the same as the square root of x. So if we're doing 100 to the power of a half, we're going to do the square root of 100, and the square root of 100 is indeed 10. Yes, so we're going to do the square root of 100 and that equals 10. So we've popped that on the answer line there. You root by the bottom number of the fraction. So in this case, because it's a two, we're doing the square root. Question number three, find the value of five to the power of minus one. Again, we've got that negative power. So we're gonna do the reciprocal. The reciprocal of five is one over five. So this is just one over five. And then we need to raise that to the power of 1. But we know that the power of 1 just keeps the number the same. So our answer to this one is just 1 over 5. So you can say that the power of negative 1 actually just finds us the reciprocal. Question number 4, 10 to the power of 0. And we've just said in a previous question that anything to the power of 0 is 1. So 10 to the power of 0, x to the power of 0, 5 to the power of 0, 8 to the power of 0... 300,000 to the power of zero is going to just be one. So the answer to that one is one. And then for part B, we've got four to the power of minus three. Again, we've got that negative power. So that's gonna become the reciprocal of four, which is one over four. And then we still need to cube it. So if we're cubing the numerator, one times one times one is just one. And four times four times four, well, four times four is 16. And then we need to take that 16 and times it by 4 again, and that is 64. 4 cubed is 64. So our answer, 1 over 64. Question number 5a, find the value of 36 to the power of a half. So again, we've got that power of a half, and we know that the power of a half means square root. So we're just being asked the square root of 36, and that is 6. The most common incorrect answer I would get for that would be 18. People just half it. If you're doing 36 times a half, that's 18, but to the power of a half means square root, so we're going to say 6. And part B, we're doing 8 to the power of a third. Now, when it was a uh, 2 on the bottom of the fraction, we did the square root. When it is a 3 on the bottom of that fraction that is an indice, we do the cube root. So 8 to the power of a third is the same as saying the cube root of 8, which is saying something times something times something that makes 8. Something times something times something that equals 8. And that number needs to be the same for all of them. And that would be 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times that by 2, 
and you're going to get 8. So the cube root of 8 is just 2. Question number 6a, find the value of 12 to the power of minus 2. Now a negative power, again, makes that base number its reciprocal. So this is saying 1 over 12, and then we still need to square it. 1 squared is 1, 12 squared is 144. So that's our answer for that one. And part b, find the value of 9 over 16 to the power of a half. Now we've said the power of a half does the square root. And here, because we've got our base number, which is a fraction, we need to square root both the top number, the numerator, and the bottom number, the denominator. So we're doing the square root of 9 over 16, which is the same as the square root of 9 over the square root of 16. And that is 3 over 4. Question number 7. Find the value of 27 to the power of a third. And we've said that the power of a third is the cube root. So we're doing the cube root of 27, which is something times something times something that makes 27. That is going to be 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times that by 3 is 27. Part B, find the value of 16 to the power of a quarter. Now we've said when there's a 2 on the bottom of the fraction, it's the square root. A 3 on the bottom, we do the cube root. So a 4 on the bottom, we're going to do the fourth root. So that's going to be like this, the fourth root of 16. So in this case, we're looking for something times something times something times something that equals 16. And all of those numbers need to be the same. Now, we've got very few options that are going to make any sense here because this would get very big very quickly, and it's actually going to be 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8, times that by 2 is 16. So that's going to be 2. Question part A, now we're combining a couple of the rules that we've looked at. I've got 25 to the power of minus a half. The negative tells us to do the reciprocal of the base number. So this is going to be... 1 over 25, but we still need to do the power of a half, which means we still need to square root. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 25 is 5. So that is your final answer, 1 over 5. For part B, again, we've got a few things to do here. Well, a couple of things to do. We need to cube root because the number at the bottom is 3. And then we need to square because the number at the top of the power is a 2. So we're going to do the cube root first. Now the cube root of 27 is 3 and the cube root of 64, something times something times something that makes 64, is 4. So this is the same as 3 over 4 but we still need to square that. We've cube rooted, we've sorted out that bottom part of the fraction, but we still need to square. So when we square, we've then got three squared, which is nine, and four squared, which is 16. So that would be my final answer for that one, nine over 16. Question number nine, find the value of 81 to the power of minus a half. The negative means we're gonna do the reciprocal of that base number, and that would be one over 81 then that is being raised to the power of a half. And the power of a half means square root. So we're going to square root the numerator, square root the denominator, and that would be 1 over 9. So 1 over 9 is my answer. And last but not least, we've got the trickiest one here because we've got to combine everything that we've seen so far. So I've got three things to do. First, I've got to do the reciprocal that comes from having a negative on the power. Then I've got to do the fourth root because that's at the bottom. And then I've got to cube because that's th the three at the top of the fraction there. So let's take this step by step. Let's use up that negative first. And we're going to do that by getting the reciprocal of this fraction. That's going to be 81 over 16. But that's still being raised to the power of three quarters. I'm then going to do the fourth root. So that's something times something times something times something that makes 81. And something times something times something times something that makes 16. That is going to be 3 for 81. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's 81. And for 16, it's going to be 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 16. So we've now dealt with the negative by doing the reciprocal. We've dealt with the 4 on the denominator by doing the fourth root. We now just need to take that 
and cube it to deal with that three. Three cubed is 27 and two cubed is eight. And you could make it a mixed number if you want, but you really don't need to. I would leave my answer as 27 over eight.